Trains can be used for almost anything. Whether you want a captivating chase or a charming encounter. Action, romance, horror, mystery. There's a train for that. It's embedded in both English and cinematic language, with too many iconic scenes and potential puns to ever fit in one video. But while the Lumiere brothers' arrival of a train at La Ciota station in 1895 has forever entwined the train with film history, according to Lynn Kirby, the relationship between trains and cinema runs deeper than just subject and medium. The train can be seen as providing the prototypical experience of looking at a framed moving image and as the mechanical double of the cinematic apparatus, both a means of transporting a passenger to a totally different place, and both are based on a fundamental paradox, simultaneous motion and stillness. This undercurrent of deception and contradiction mirrors the train's ability to become the setting of any genre, and to blur the line between excitement and fear. Even in the context of romance, fantasy and adventure, Trains are often a symbol of peril. With the arrival of the Industrial Revolution, trains appeared as the ultimate mark of progress, and they persist as a symbol of an imagined future, from their presentation in our more recent past to current ideas of innovation. But it's with sarcasm that Charles Dickens describes how the yet unfinished and unopened railroad was in progress, and from the very core of all this dire disorder, trailed smoothly away upon its mighty course of civilization and improvement. This skepticism towards new technology isn't surprising, especially as the rapidly changing technological landscape remains a source of anxiety today. Technology! But while the disruption to everyday life, destruction of homes and not infrequent accidents did provide reasonable cause for concern, I think there's more to the Victorian perspective than just a fear of, or anger towards, trains. In The Signalman, written in 1866, a year after Dickens' own involvement in a train accident, the railway emerges as a location haunted by a contemporary anxiety, but not necessarily around technology itself, rather the feeling of being overwhelmed, isolated, that came with it the feeling of helplessness in the face of an unstoppable and relenting force. The train acting not only as a double for progress, but perhaps death itself. The titular character is troubled by visions of a mysterious figure, one arm across their face, the other waving. As if to say, for God's sake, clear the way. It warns of a danger, but one that the signalman is always powerless to prevent. And, like the unstoppable train, this devastation is cast with a certain inevitability, as finally the signalman falls prey to Dickens' fascination with those drawn towards their own destruction. But the train can also be a place of possibility, uncertainty, where catching or missing a train could lead to entirely different narratives, like the alternative timelines that emerge in the film Sliding Doors, from 1998, or more dramatically in Mr. Nobody, a film from 2009. Whether it's a vehicle of fate or chance, trains frequently serve as a reminder that time waits for no protagonist. Like the repeated interruption of the train bell in Brief Encounter, from 1945, that indicates these brief encounters at the station must come to an end. They have a train to catch. The bell also makes an intrusive appearance in the signalman, signalling not only the approaching train, but also the arrival of the apparition. This isn't so much a reminder of time running out, although it always is, but more that there's no time to rest. That the progression of time, or death, or progress itself is relentless. And the phrase is repeated throughout the story, hello, below there, for God's sake clear the way equally speaks to the relentless speed of a force that would destroy anything in its path. Criticisms of the speed of modern life have always found a home in the modern zombie. The running zombie, made famous by films like 28 Days Later in 2002, whose rage virus recontextualized the zombie as a figure of the rapid development of science, technology, and just generally how life comes at you fast. 
And I know I talk about zombies a lot, but this is still about trains, I swear. Because the 2016 film Train to Busan effectively combines this existing zombie metaphor with the train's association with speed and progress. And to try to move away from zombies, here the reanimated dead could equally be made in the image of Frankenstein's monster. Mary Shelley's vision of the modern Prometheus frequently interpreted, although a little reductively, as a warning of technology gone too far. Our ability to create things that take on a life of their own. The technology, oh my god, dilemma, which is now a familiar narrative of science fiction. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. But while the virus in Train to Busan can be vaguely attributed to some kind of biochemical leak, it's economy and business that are more firmly implicated in the outbreak and emerge as the real villains of the film. <laughs> This is a speed that values efficiency and conformity, but it comes at the cost of humanity and personal identity. And judging by the film's emphasis on uniforms, these characters were dehumanized long before they joined the undead. But in the very niche genre that is trains as metaphor for economic and political systems, no film is more overt than Snowpiercer, from 2013, whose carriages can be seen to enact the class system under capitalism, the poorest at the back and the rich elite at the front. But this is a train without a destination, in an endless loop, always pushing forward but never really going anywhere. Rather than progress, this is stillness with the illusion of movement, recalling Maxim Gorky's response to that first Lumineer film the force of illusion that has haunted film from its very inception. It is terrifying to watch, but it is the movement of shadows, mere shadows, curses and ghosts, evil spirits that have cast whole cities into eternal sleep come to mind, and you feel as though Merlin's vicious trick has been played out before you. Snowpiercer's train creates the illusion of movement when its occupants are really only trapped in a system that perpetuates itself. The rapid motion of the train mirrors John Baudrillard's description of driving as a spectacular form of amnesia. Everything to be discovered. Everything to be obliterated. But if everything is so quickly forgotten, there's no way to contextualise experience, to put things in perspective. Train travel, and film for that matter, combines this transience with a greater sense of helplessness. You start at the beginning, you finish at the end, and you don't have much control over what happens in between. Much of our train-based language speaks to this association. Railroaded, tunnel vision, steaming ahead. And I think it's equally relevant that chaos is often visualized as a runaway train. But as poet Ivor Cutler explains in Get Off the Road. To see a road, to sense a road, it has to be empty. Get off the road, climb onto the verge, then look back, and you will see the road lying pressed along the ground with no beginning nor end, like a conjunction, like and, only longer. Don't walk on it, for God's sake, don't walk on it, and don't travel on it, and don't cross it, unless you're a chicken. Cutler's poem urges us to take time to reflect. To get off the road is to pause, to consider our direction and perhaps instead choose a track less travelled. And yet, in another trick of contradiction, the train can become this space of reflection. Just as Cutler defined the road as a conjunction, like and only longer, the train exists in between, connecting a point of origin with a destination as if in limbo. In NBC's The Good Place, the train acts as the literal connection between the realms of the afterlife, and the train takes on a similar role in Hayao Miyazaki's Spirited Away, travelling further into the spirit world. But it's the execution of this scene that defines the space. No dialogue, no action, nothing to advance the plot, just three minutes of silence and stillness. In an interview with Roger Ebert, when questioned on these moments of gratuitous motion, Miyazaki replied, We have a word for that in Japanese. It's called Ma. 
emptiness. It's there intentionally. The train in Spirited Away is the place of contemplation, a liminal space between departure and arrival. Rather than invoking the rapid acceleration that mirrors the spectacular amnesia of modern life, it's a relief from it, not just for the characters, but for the audience. Returning to that fundamental paradox of train travel, simultaneous motion and stillness. 150 years after Dickens' writing, trains persist not only as a symbol of speed and progress, but our unease with it. It's constant motion mirroring a more personal kind of displacement, and it's forced a constant reminder of that which we have little power to change. But despite the apparent certainty of this momentum, the train is equally a subject of mystery and ambiguity. The familiar world of signs and signals that were once so easy to interpret giving way to an unpredictable future. Really, the only constant here is contradiction the parallel tracks of horror and adventure, connection and separation, speed and stillness. The train has always been a symbol of how quickly things can change, and these repeated warnings to get off the road, for God's sake clear the way, are a call to be mindful of where we might be headed, or what might be headed towards us. Everywhere I go I stroll around into the sky Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is probably one of the broadest topics I've ever covered, and I didn't even touch on westerns, but I hope you enjoyed my very selective look at trains, and I'll try to lay off the zombies next year, but I make no promises.